Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Ruggiano, and in 1988, I was struggling with addiction, and I went into a treatment center. I set up a helpline number, which is 855-963-2113. That's 855-963-2113. That number, phones will be manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're struggling with addiction, or you know someone that is struggling with addiction, please call that number and let me help. I will be hands-on. I will be personally involved in the person's recovery. They will meet me. They will spend time with me. And I will help them live a life beyond their wildest dreams. Hi, my name is Anthony Ruggiano Jr. and I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters. And if you enjoy my content, please click the like button and hit subscribe and ring the bell. I'd appreciate it. And thank you to all my Patreon members. Without you, we would not be able to bring this content here. And uh, if you want to become a member of ReformGangsters.com and get early access to content and be part of the show, ask and get your Mafia history questions answered. So just become a member and we could have a a uh, uh, fireside chat uh, and you know I'll be looking forward to it then I have also this month in March March 25th as you know Rita Giganti who's uh, you know part of our team um, is going to be in Brooklyn doing a reading from her book and um, the book is titled The Godfather's Daughter and if you would like to get an autographed copy please get tickets for the event at RitaGiganti.net um, it's going to be real good. Also, my daughter's going to be there on the panel with us. So that's going to be interesting. Um, they'll be talking about their upbringings, you know, how they found out about the mob and all that good stuff. A lot of people want to know what I did this past weekend. Um, so I did my um, my podcast in a studio in Long Island. And Vinny D'Agostino was my guest. He was an FBI agent for nine years. He was on the uh, Columbo squad, um, investigating Columbo wise guys. And uh him and I had a really great conversation because um, a lot of guys that he was investigating and a couple of guys he worked with, I actually knew. I had relationships with. Uh, I was in prison with them or knew them from the street. So it really flowed well. I think it came, it was a really interesting uh, back and forth about his side of it and our side of it. And uh, it would, you know, when it does get edited and it does come out, you know, I'm sure everybody would like it. So check it out. Um, I think you'll have fun with it. Um, we also did something with Hollywood Wade, my friend, about um, Behind the Gangster. It was about, we talked about movies. And, you know, I, I told him, too, you know, like, I, I, I'm, i like, critical of mob movies, because especially when it's about people I know, you know, people I had relationships with. So I'm sort of, like, on the fence with it. And I really, you know, the best John Gotti movie was the one with probably with Amin Asante, but that wasn't all true either. You know, I'm no Travolta. You know, I just couldn't see John Travolta as John Gotti. I, I don't know. You know, just didn't, you know, Vinnie Barbarino doesn't really make a good, uh, you know, um, John Gotti. I don't know. He did a good Vinnie Barbarino back in the day and Welcome Back, Carter. You know, but uh, I don't know about John Gotti. So we talked about that. We talked about Ominous. We talked about him. We talked about uh, Anthony Quinn playing Neil. Um, he did a good job. You know, I knew Neil personally. We talked about that. We talked about Tommy D. Simone um, again, which you know was a good topic because I was friends with Tommy. I spent time with him. I you know I, I hung out with him. Uh, Joe Pesky was definitely a, did a great job acting, but was definitely miscast because uh, Tommy was tall and handsome, and Joe Pesky short. You know, and uh, so that was a little bit of a miscast as far as appearances are concerned, but. You know, we talked about that. We talked about Paul Castellano. Um, you know, he the couple of times I met him, you know, I met him. At, he, of course, the first time I met him was at my wedding in 1977. He came to my wedding um, with all the captains. And uh, I met him then. And then I met him at a sit down after a good friend of mine was 
was murdered. I met him there out of Brooklyn. So I had a couple of a couple of meetings with him. We talked about that. So that was also a good conversation about about behind the gangsters. And now, you know, people want me to talk about um St. Paddy's Day. As you know, I'm not Irish. So um, but I have a lot of Irish friends. My 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 in fact, my second wife was half Irish, so my daughter has a little, little bit of Irish in her. My father used to tell her not to tell nobody, which was just like an inside joke. Um, so it, a question I got was, what did the Italian mob do on St. Paddy's Day? Well, I can't speak for everybody, but I could speak for my family. My father did not like many Irish people. He had a really good friend of his named Irish Augie, who was a gangster. I mean, Augie was like a dangerous person. He was a, a street guy. He was like my father's Joe Watts. Like John Gotti had Joe Watts. My father had Irish Augie. He was very well respected in the mob. He was with my father. He was always at my house. He was dangerous. I mean, he was a dangerous. He was a really good earner. He was very handsome, big drinker, very handsome, had charisma, sharp dresser. Um, you know, he was, uh, and my father loved him. He was one of my father's main guys. My father loved him. You know, he was well known. He was called Irish Augie. Unfortunately, he died of a, he had a brain tumor. You know, um, the last time I, I, you know, I went to his funeral many years ago. So, you know, my father had relationships with Irish guys that were with him. And Irish Augie was probably his, one of his main guys, you know. But uh, overall, my father really, we didn't celebrate St. Paddy's Day. You know, it was an Irish holiday. We never went to Manhattan on St. Paddy's Day because of the St. Paddy's Day parade. And then after the parade, everybody was in the bars getting drinking and drunk and you know, so we never ventured, you know, into into um, into Manhattan on St. Paddy's Day. Maybe we went to Mulberry Street once or twice, but we never really went out. Even I didn't go out there at night, you know, not just to avoid trouble. You know, it's funny because I never wore green, but, you know, my it's funny. My grandmother, my mother's mother was Sicilian, born in Sicily and came here when she was a child. And for some reason on St. Paddy's Day, she used to wear green. And my, she lived with us. She always lived with us. And I remember as a child, she would come out of her apartment and come downstairs into our apartment and she would have green on. And my father would be sitting there and my father would tell my mother, what the hell does your mother have green on for? She's not Irish. And he would get annoyed that my grandmother had green on, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, it's, it's a good holiday. You know, listen, uh, St. Patrick's was Italian. I don't know. So I don't know why the Italians don't celebrate it. He immigrated to, 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 to Ireland. Right. Um, but you know, and I have good Irish friends, you know, when I was in school, kill prison, you know, as many of you know, I, I was in there and my, my cellmate was Kevin Kelly, who was a very dear friend of mine back then. Uh, you know, we got really tight. We lived together for years in the same cell. Um, he was Irish. He was a Westie. You know, he's a, was a real Westie, a main Westie. I mean, you know, he had bodies. He was a, a killer. He was a, a really great guy. You know, we got along great. He was a little bit of a cleaning fanatic. He used to clean the cell like he was a little bit of a cleaning fanatic. But that was good because my cell was always clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, other and I used to tease him all the time about that. But anyway, he was a real Irishman. I mean, he you know, he was Irish. He was I was an Irish, Amer you know, Ameri Irish American Hell's Kitchen, born in Hell's Kitchen. His family immigrated from Ireland to Hell's Kitchen, which was an Irish stronghold in Manhattan. For those of you that don't know about Hell's Kitchen, it's not the same anymore. You know, back then when I was a kid, it was all Irish pubs there. You know, the Westies ran the show. They had everything up there, the docks on the west side. I mean, they were affiliated at first with the Genovese family. Then they uh, then they got away from the Genovese family and they became affiliated with our family, with Paul Castellano. Um, you know, I uh, and uh, I became very tight with, with Kevin. Um, he's a really good guy, a uh, dangerous guy. And, uh, you know, and on St. Paddy's Day, it's funny because when St. Paddy's Day used to roll around, you know, we were cellmates and he would start getting like, greeting cards like Christmas, you know, when you get Christmas cards, like they celebrated St. Paddy's Day so great. Like he would get like cards and money, you know, money in the cards, like, you know, presents for St. Paddy's Day, you know, and he would get all these St. Patrick's Day cards with money and, 
and for St. Paddy's Day, like it was Christmas, and he would get visits, people would come visit him, you know, extra visits for the holiday, like it was like Christmas to them, you know, and uh, I used to find that funny, you know, that uh, he would, that would happen for him on every, say, and I spent a couple of St. Paddy's Days with him, but Italians, we celebrate St. Joseph's Day, for those of you who don't, don't know, that's March 19th, ironically, that's the day my father passed away on St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, that's pretty much our St. Paddy's Day, St. Joseph's Day, you know, we celebrate that Italians, which is only three days after St. Paddy's Day, two days actually after St. Paddy's Day, right? St. Paddy's Day is the 17th and Joe St. Joseph's Day is the 19th. And, you know, once a year, Italians make a special pastry for St. Joseph's Day. So, you know, spines of St. Giuseppe we make, which is delicious. I get them where I live now. I have an Italian specialty store that makes them. So I'm looking forward to having a couple of them this week. But uh, yeah, so you know that we never, I never celebrated St. Paddy's. I never wore green. You know, um, I'm Italian. You know, I'm Italian American, but I had Irish friends. My father was a little prejudiced. He really didn't like Irish because you know, my, you know, my father's generation comes from a different time. You know, like there, there was a lot of racism when my father was a kid between the Italians and the Irish. You know, the Irish were, became all cops and firemen and the Italians became, you know, construction workers and gangsters, basically, you know. And when I was, you know, when my father was a kid, 90% of the police force were Irish. So my father had a bad taste in his mouth for them and they had a bad taste in their mouth for Italians. So there was a lot of conflict, you know, from what he, I understand through history, through what he told me, but, uh, he did have Irish friends, he, like Irish Augie, and I did have Irish friends, but we never actually celebrated St. Paddy's Day. And I don't really remember anybody that was around my father actually celebrating St. Paddy's Day, except, you know, like Tony Lee's wife, Helen, she was 100% Irish. So she celebrated it. You know, Tony Lee celebrated it a little bit with her because his wife was Irish. But outside of that, we never really were uh, celebrating it. But uh, I know people that did celebrate it and you know and it's a it's it's a nice holiday for them so like i said earlier my name is anthony regina jr and i want to thank everybody for tuning in to reform gangsters we have a lot of good content coming up um my show on netflix i'll i'll just talk about that another second uh from what i understand it should be coming out in around another two to three months it's being edited now it's coming to the end of it and i believe the new name of it's going to be get Gotti. originally it was supposed to be Fear City 2, but from my understanding is that might change to a new title, which is Get Gotti, and I'm um, looking forward to it. It's a three-part series that's going to be on Netflix, so I'm looking forward to that. I'll, I should be involved in some press releases soon, I'm hoping, and um, also don't forget about my uh, addiction helpline. For those of you who need help, it's not a personal phone line to me. This is strictly for people that are struggling with addiction please give us a call at 855-963-2113. Um, and, you know, someone will be there to help you. Um, if you have insurance, we'll help you get into a treatment center. We'll help you get into a detox. And if you come to the state I'm living in, um, I'll be there to meet you, to help you through your ordeal. So please call if you have need help or you know anybody else that needs help. Outside of that, um, have a good day. Stay safe on St. Paddy's Day. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.